Okay folks, so um, what I'm going to do in this uh, video is just go over the exam paper um, to the class transforms questions that would be kind of re related to what you're doing in the assignment. Really this video is for those who are probably last minute uh, trying to understand the Laplace transforms. Um, there's so much in it really you're in trouble but this is just to give you maybe get you started even. Okay, so how the Laplace transforms work um, is what you do is you translate the differential equation into an algebraic equation. Now, what, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides of these. Now the whole time I'm referencing a table, um, the Laplace transform table that's on page 230 of your notes. So uh, 230 for any of these formulas. Okay, so the first form I'm going to use is a derivative is sent to by the Laplace transform s times big F of s minus little f of zero. We're going to use that and I'm also going to send say that so this is L standing for Laplace transform and a constant is sent to by the Laplace transform constant over s. So I'll be using those um, from the tables. Now we have this translation from functions of uh, time or sometimes distance to functions of s. Little f um, gets sent to big F, little f of t gets sent to big F of s, so that's what this means here. Now we're working with v though, so this is like v dash of t, so we're going to have s times big V of s minus little v of 0. Little v of 0 is in the question, but thankfully it's just, it's just 0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the Laplace transform of both sides of this equation, and so dv dt using this formula will be sent to s times big V of s minus little v of 0 equal to 9.8 is a constant, so it's sent to 9.8 over s minus, now if it's a constant times something, you fix the constant, that's 0 0.2 times, well, what's v, little v of t is sent to big V of s. So that's the first step. The second step is you apply the initial conditions. The initial conditions here is that v of 0 is equal to 0. So we can just uh, scratch this, that's gone. Uh, the third thing we do is we solve for big V of s. Now this is just an algebra equation, so this is what Laplace transforms does. It terms, turns a differential equation into an algebra equation. Now to solve this for big V of s, you want to get all the V of s's on both sides. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add 0 0.2 big V of s to both sides, and then I get uh, s times big V of s plus 0 0.2 times big V of s equal to 9.8 divided by s. Now, to s now uh, the question, how many v, v of s is If you do some of the class transforms, you'll quickly see what we do here is we take out the common factor of big V of s. And then finally, to get V of S on its own, we divide both sides by uh, S plus 0 0.2. Now this, after you've taken the Laplace transform, the next few steps, they're supposed to be easy. It's just algebra. Now we've got 9.8 divided by S and now also divided by S plus 0.2. Um, that would, that's something that's a little bit tricky. Uh, you probably look back at the lectures to see why isn't it 9 point s divided by s, all divided by s plus uh, point 0.2, but uh, I'm going to have to run with this. So now what you want to do is you want to send this back using the tables. Now there's some kind of things that look like they're in the tables here. So for example 9.8 over s we know is going to go back to 9.8. And the other thing we see is that 1 over s plus a gets sent back to by the inverse Laplace transform e to the minus at. But the problem is this, these things are all multiplied together. And when they're multiplied together, you can send them back um, separately. It's only sums that you can apply the inverse Laplace transform to separately. So what we have to do is we have to write this as a sum of simple terms. 
And what that is, is to say that we need to do partial fractions. Partial fractions is taking a complicated, what's called rational function, and writing it as a sum of simpler rational functions that are hopefully in the tables. So what we have to do here um, is the first step with partial fractions is factorize the bottom. It's been done, happy days, bingo bango. Uh, it is, the bottom is factorized. The next thing we have to do is, okay, what rules are they? Now S plus 0.2 is a rule one, and S on its own is a rule one. If it's S plus 0.2 squared, all squared, that's a rule two, and if it's S squared, plus stuff that you can factorize, that's what a rule three is. Now the good news here is if it's, if it's all rule ones, uh, you can do the cover up method. And that's what we can do here. So you get 9.8 divided by S times S plus 0 0.2, we can do the cover up method. So the cover up, well, rule one says that this is equal to some constant divided by S plus some constant divided by S plus 0 0.2. Both of those we can send back no problem using the inverse Laplace uh, transform. Uh, we just need to find these constants and the cover-up method tells us how to do that. Cover-up method says the constant that goes here, you say cover up the s and substitute into what's left, the value of s that makes this zero, which is obviously just zero here. So get 9.8 divided by zero plus 0.2. And then the other one, we're going to cover up the s plus 0.2 and put in the value of s that makes that into this, that makes this equal to 0. And the value of s that makes this equal to 0 is minus 0 0.2. So that 9.8 divided by minus 0 0.2. You can go into the calculator on these. Um, how I'm doing it is uh, 0.2 is a fifth. Dividing by fifth is multiplying by 5. So this is actually 9.8 multiplied by 5, or going to the calculator, you'll get 49 divided by s. Um, and then this plus over minus is minus, minus 49 over s plus 0 0.2. And now we apply the inverse Laplace transform to this. Now this is big V of s. So therefore, little v of t, which is what we're looking for, 49 over s goes back to the constant 49. Fix the constant 49 here, and 1 over s plus 0.2 goes back to e to the minus 0 0.2t. And that's that question absolutely done, uh, part 1. Uh, let's have a look at what it's looking for in part 2. Remember all the time you can pause me and email questions if you want. The second thing, hence or otherwise, find the terminal velocity. And then there's a hint. Uh, the velocity is basically what happens, the terminal velocity is what happens when t is big. Now what you need to be able to know, or what you need to know rather, is that when time gets big, negative exponentials go to zero. This is 49 times something going to zero, so you're just left with 49. You pretty much just write down the answer here. Uh, v infinity, the terminal velocity is 49. I suppose we're engineers, we should be using units, uh, it says meters, it says, seconds, so this is uh, meters per second. Okay, so that's the first question, done. So this is the past transforms, okay. Second question. So this one, the differential equation governing the displacement of a damped harmonic oscillator is given by y double dashed of t um, plus 11 y dashed of t plus 30 y of t is equal to zero. So same setup, you take the Laplace transform of both sides. The only thing that we haven't got yet, if you look at your tables on page 230, you will see the following, that a second derivative is sent to, by the Laplace transform, s squared times big F of s minus s squared. Uh, minus s times f dash to uh, s times f of zero minus f dash to zero. Um, I actually doubt myself, but yeah, that's right. Okay. So we're going to. So that's the only thing we're looking at for here. Remember, little y of t will go to big y of s, and we're going to um, do a term by term fixing constants. I'm probably going to have to write it small here for me. But let's see. 
So same as before, you turn it into an algebra equation by applying the Laplace transform to both sides. So here, instead of f's, we've got y's. So we have to understand the role of f in all the formulas, including the one I just scrubbed out, is played by y. So y double dashed is sent to s squared, not big F, but big Y, minus S times, not little f, but little y, minus y dashed of zero. Yeah, we're going to run out of space, but that's, that's just the way it is. Um, I think for the next thing, I'm just going to go on to the next line here, plus a let, now, fix the constant, fix the 11, and then y dashed, using the formula that I rubbed out, we sent to s times big y of s minus little y of zero um, plus fix the 30 and little y of t gets sent to big y of s. Now zero I recommend you send as well and the reason I say that is because if there's a one if you just leave it at zero while that's correct the Laplace transform of zero zero you might be tempted to think that the Laplace transform of one is one and it's not it's one of s so I'm actually going to write in the tables as a constant, the Laplace transform of a constant zero should be zero over s. So first step, a little bit messy written over two lines. Now, when you fix the 11 and send the derivative, you, pr you really need the brackets here because otherwise you're not going to multiply 11 by minus y of zero. Next line, apply the initial conditions. So you got s squared times big Y of s minus s times y of zero. I look at the question, y of zero is two. This is minus s times 2 minus 2s. y dash to 0 minus y dash to 0. I look at the question. It's in front of you as well. Page 228. That's 0. So that's gone. Um, now I have 11 times s times y of s. And then plus 11 by minus y of 0. y of 0 is 2. So it's 11 by minus 2 minus 22. And we're going to have to go on to the next line. Plus... 30y of s equal to, now the 0 divided by s is 0. That's the time, in my opinion, to do the 0. Now we're trying to solve this for big y of s. So I want to get out of here um, the 2s and the 22. So I'll add 2s to both sides. That'll get rid of minus 2s. And I'm going to add 22 to both sides. So add 2s and add 22, do this to both sides. Let's see if I can get the question in one line. So you have s squared times big y of s plus 11s, big y of s, hopefully you can see this, uh, plus 30 times y of s equal to 2s plus 22. And now you need to solve this for big y of s, so you take out the common factor here of big y of s. So you take out the common factor of big y of s, what are we left with? s squared plus 11s plus 30 equal to 2s plus 22 and then you need to divide both sides by this and I'm just going to call that q for a quadratic in my little notes for myself here divide both sides by the quadratic I get big y of s the Laplace transform of the solution remember we're looking for y of t here it's the Laplace transform we know is 2s plus 22 divided by s squared plus 11s plus 30. So, uh, okay, I could be drawing this picture with the t and the s, uh, and I will be drawing that on the next question because things are going to be a little bit more complicated, but we've seen this, I've drawn this picture 10 times, you know, so hopefully it's okay. We get to here, we want to send it back. You look in the tables and this thing, now if it was s squared plus 30, it would be a sum of sines and cosines, um, but it's not s squared plus 30. So maybe we can write it as a sum of simple things. And that's called doing the um, partial fraction expansion. And the first step is to factorize the bottom. Now you want the bottom to factorize. If the bottom, now it could be a rule two, which is hard. If it doesn't factorize, you're in trouble. Uh, you need to do a complete the square, but we, we, we hope that doesn't happen. Uh, well, hopefully, maybe we get two rule ones in. That would be great. That makes the question quite easy. So s squared plus 11s plus 30. Now, you can factorize this however way you want. I'm recommending this AC method where you multiply a by c. 1 by 30 is 30. Look at all the factors of 30. 1 by 30, 2 by 15, 
three by ten, four does not go, five by six, six you already have. And can you uh, write eleven s or eleven in terms of these? Yes, you can. You can rewrite eleven s as five s plus six s, and if you do that, you're away with it. Because what you have is s squared. Uh, write the eleven s as five s plus six s plus thirty. Take out the common factor out of the first two, which is s, and you're left with s plus 5. And then take something out of the second two that leaves s plus 5 again, and that would be 6. Take out the common factor of s plus 5. What are you left with? s plus 6. Happy days. Because it's two rule ones. If it was s plus 5 and s plus 5, it would be a rule 2. So what we're dealing with is uh, two rule ones, which means that we're we'll able to cover up method again. Um, now, this exam paper pays. It, may, it, it makes it a little bit easy that two of them are rule ones. But um, when I say two of them, I mean question A and B. But in question C, we'll see something a little bit uh, more difficult, um, a little bit different, I would say. Okay, so our big Y of S that we're hoping to send back to find little y of t is 2s plus 22 divided by s squared plus 11s plus 30, which is s plus 5 times s plus 6. So it's two rule ones, happy days. So we can do the cover-up method. So uh, the partial fraction theory says some constant over s plus 5 plus some constant over s plus 6 and we can find that constant, those constants using the cover-up method. So for s plus 5, we're going to cover up s plus 5, and whatever's left we're going to put here, but we're going to put in a value of s, that is the value of s that makes s plus 5 0, the answer is minus 5. So we're going to have 2 times minus 5 plus 22, I'm covering up s plus 5, so s plus 6 is left, plus 6, and I'm substituting in the minus 5. s plus 6, cover up s plus 6, you get 2s plus 22 over s plus 5. Oh crap, what to do? Because I have to sub in the minus 6. So 2s plus 22, covering up the s plus 6, s plus 5. Subbing in the value of s that makes s plus 6 equal 0. Minus 6. Okay, so I get here 22 minus 10, that's 12, divided by 1, that's 12 over s plus 5. Easy to send back. And the other one, 22 minus 12, that's 10, divided by minus 1 is minus 10. You can take the minus out there. Ah, and this is handy. Now, the last time I wrote um, I, I had something and I said, oh, that implied that V of T was here. You can do, you should not say equals 12, e to whatever. That's bad maths. You should do inverse to pass transform. That's okay. Or else write implies that little y of T is equal to fix the 12. 1 over S plus 5 goes back to E to the minus 5T. Fix the minus 10. 1 over S plus 6 goes back to E to the minus 6T. Okay, and the second part of the question is... Is the oscillator underdamped, overdamped, or critically damped? Now, this is kind of theory work. It's only one mark. But uh, I think to understand this, it's nice to get this right. So, there's three, if there's oscillations, that's like a door that would slam. The damping isn't strong enough. Um, if, like this, there's two exponentials, this one goes to zero faster than this one. And it's a door that starts closing and it basically stops and then it takes ages to close. That's one that's overdamped. So this is the answer to this. One mark overdamped. As they go, nice and easy. Uh, I'm sure you'll get a question like that in the assignment, or I think you do anyway. Right, now question C. So th they were two easy parts. Um, 
where is it paid back? It was paid back probably in question C, which it actually isn't hard once we do it, but it's just a little different. And it's a little different because you're always working with T to S, but in this question, the, um, the questions are given in terms of X. Now, you're an engineer, so actually, this would be something if you went to level eight, you'd be working with. So we got functions um, of a variable X, going to functions of a variable s. Everything else is the same, it's just rather than t, it's x. Pass transform is still going to go here. You're still going to have, say, y of x going to big y of s, but y of x will not go back to y of t, but y of x. So this is the only change. And it, it throws a few people, even though the questions probably aren't too bad. Or maybe they are, so okay, we'll, we'll see what I mean by that. So we got to consider... Obviously this X is for beams and stuff, which is, so this is where the Laplace comes in a lot for you. So consider a light simply support a beam, or draw it under quadratic load, which is something we didn't do. So this is a load that looks something like this, okay? Uh, which does happen. Uh, equal to zero, the quadratic load is equal to zero at the endpoints and rising to a maximum of 54 kilonewtons per meter at the midpoint. The bending moment is given